Section 13.1, Irreversible Processes. A reversible process is a process that is physically possible even when played in reverse. Imagine seeing each of the following situations on a video. If the video were played in reverse, would you see something that could happen? Evaluate each situation. A football travels from point A to point B along the parabolic path as shown. This is a reversible process. If you were to rewind it, you would easily get the football to go back from A to B with no resistance. A person with a parachute moves downward at a constant speed through air that is at rest. This is an irreversible process, being that the person would have um, be dealing with air resistance at the time. And the air resistance is causing kind of like air friction, you might say. But this is not something that we'd be able to happen backwards, so to speak. Now, if cart A were to hit cart B at rest, and then A now comes to rest and B goes, could this be reversible? Well, yes, if B went to the left and hit A, then B would be at rest and A would move. That's a very reversible process. However, if cart A strikes B and they stick together and move as one, that is an irreversible process. Partly because there is some deformation that occurs as the two objects stick together. When friction is involved or deformation occurs, that's a pretty telltale sign of an irreversible process. A cart rolls down a semicircular track with no friction, moves to the right with a certain speed at the bottom. Again, no friction, that's the key. That would be a reversible process because if you move to the left with that same certain speed, you'd be able to get up the hill to a certain height. However, if a block rolls down a semicircular track moving to the right with a certain speed, if it's a rough track, you're losing energy due to friction and you're not going to be able to regain that back if you go in the opposite direction. That's an irreversible process. <laughs> so what determines whether a process is reversible or irreversible? Processes that occur in one direction and not in another are said to be irreversible. In the allowed direction, energy converts from a more organized form to a less organized form. What determines the usefulness of energy? As energy of a system becomes less organized, the amount of work it can do on other systems decreases. <clears throat> what two things did Sadie Carnot find out about the operations of heat engine? A heat engine also known as a thermodynamic engine. Well, one, he found out that heat work by a heat engine does not directly come from fuel from the source. However, it does come from the heat that does come from the fuel. And number two, if fuel transfers, in other words, the heat that is uh, reacting uh, from the fuel, uh, transfers a certain amount of energy to the gas, only a fraction of that energy can actually do work. In other words, you're always going to have some internal friction in the engine uh, due to all the moving parts uh, that is going to result in some heat loss from the engine. Carnot's principle basically states that it is impossible to build an engine that uses all of its thermal energy to do mechanical work. This is one statement of the second law of thermodynamics. In what direction, what is the direction of thermal energy transfer? Well, in an isolated system, energy always transfers from a warmer region to a cooler region. Again, this is another statement of the second law of thermodynamics. The, the second law of thermodynamics is basically a way of stating 
how natural processes occur. And you can basically come up with several examples that fit. Section 13.2, Statistical Approach to Irreversible Processes. What is a macro state? Give an example of a macro state when ordering six letters A through Z. Well, in physics, a macro state is defined by the macroscopic properties of the system, such as temperature, pressure, volume, etc. This now, with the example given, this would be the arrangement of the six letters altogether. What is a microstate? Well, in physics, the microstate would be the arrangement of each and every molecule within a system at a single instant. This, of course, would be the individual letters in their macroscopic arrangements. What does entropy of a system measure? Entropy measures the degree of disorder or disorganization of a system. <laughs> and the second law basically states that natural processes, which are spontaneous, always proceed in a direction of increasing entropy, which is increasing disorder and disorganization. Section 13.3, Connecting Statistical and Macroscopic Approaches to Irreversible Processes. <clears throat> During any process that involves the transfer of energy through heating, the net change in entropy of the system and its environment is always greater than zero. The net, if, if the net entropy of the system is zero, that would be a reversible process. The net entropy will always be greater than zero for irreversible processes. What does that basically mean? For an irreversible process, the, the net entropy is always increasing. Disorder is always increasing for an irresistible process, for an irreversible process. For one that is reversible, however, the increase in entropy that you encounter would be equal to the decrease in entropy as you reverse the direction of the process. <clears throat> so again, reversible processes have essentially a net entropy of zero for the system, an irreversible process have a positive increase in entropy change. Section 13.4, thermodynamic engines and pumps. Explain the action of a thermodynamic engine and fill out the diagram to help you with your explanation. A higher region of temperature known as the hot reservoir, heats the system. This allows the engine to do work, work, that being useful energy on the environment. The remaining energy is exhausted by removing heat to a region of colder temperature known as the cold reservoir. So this right here would be the hot reservoir, a region of higher temperature. And we're going to get heat from that region. We're going to call that QH, heat coming in from a hot reservoir. Work is being done. That's the useful energy. And the heat is being expelled to a region of lower temperature known as the cold reservoir, which we will label QC. Now, according to this right here, if we look at uh, conservation of energy, energy initial equals energy final, the initial energy would be your QH, the incoming energy. And that would be equal to the work plus the QC. That's the useful energy plus the energy exhausted. If we solve for work, the work done by a heat engine is the heat coming in minus the heat going out. That will be useful later on. Define efficiency. Efficiency is uh, of, a, of an engine represents the percentage of useful work. Well, percent means part of the whole. 
So if we take the useful work divided by the total energy, QH, we get a percentage of the total energy or a useful percentage. Now, if we recall work is QH minus QC over QH, we can split that up into two separate denominators and QH over QH is one minus QC over QH. So we have two different ways to calculate the efficiency or the percentage of useful energy uh, done on the environment. The Carnot efficiency represents maximum theoretical efficiency. It's what the engine should do, not what it does. And what it should do is based upon minimizing internal friction. And if internal friction is minimized, it can achieve close to maximum theoretical efficiency. And that would be very similar to the efficiency equation, but instead of heat, you are relating the actual temperature difference, one minus Tc over Th, not Qc over Qh. Explain how a power plant works. Well, a power plant, number one, fuel uh, heats the working substance. The working substance, which is now hot and expanded, and the working substance, of course, would be the air <clears throat> in this case. So the, we're going to boil some water, and the water is going to turn into steam, and steam is the working substance, and that is going to turn the turbine. Now, turning the turbine is going to result in positive work on the environment. Now, that working substance, the steam, is going to condense and find its way down into this cooling tower over here. But while it does that, the rotating turbine is causing loops of wire to rotate near a magnet. And changing magnetic fields through a loop generate something known as alternating current or AC electricity, which is what gets sent to our homes and businesses and hospitals and you name it. Explain how a thermodynamic pump works. Fill out the diagram to help. Well, a thermodynamic pump is exactly opposite from a thermodynamic engine. Instead of taking heat from a hot environment to do work and then releasing or exhausting heat to a lower environment, we do work to take heat from a lower temperature environment and bring it to a hotter, higher temperature environment. It's exactly the opposite. We take work to bring heat from a colder region to a higher region. So positive work is done on a working substance. The working substance is usually going to be some refrigerant. Um, in most cases, that refrigerant is usually, at least for refrigerators, is known as Freon. Um, but it's, it's some sort of refrigerant. And work is going to be done to uh, essentially, on that refrigerant, um, to transfer energy from a cooler region to a warmer region. That is the ultimate goal. But as you can see, it's working exactly backwards. Now, let's, uh, for a refrigerator would be one example of a, a, a heat pump or a thermodynamic pump. An air conditioning unit would be another. So how does an air conditioning system work? Well, first, warm air from the room uh, is drawn into the system. This air flows over the cold evaporator pipes, and it's going to uh, cool down the air while a dehumidifier removes the moisture. Meanwhile, the coolant, the refrigerant, flowing through the chiller pipes is going to absorb this heat, okay? And it's going to evaporate. Well, this is gonna turn from a cool liquid to a warm gas. This warm air is pumped outside. Meanwhile, while it does this, the coolant flows through a compressor while compressing this uh, fluent, this fluid, it's going to um, turn back into a cooler liquid. The cool air uh, will then recirculate into the room where it's going to mix with the existing air and reduce the temperature and the humidity in the air. And also remove particulates too. That's another benefit of air conditioning system and central air.